Okay, so this is a tutorial on creating a 15 second commercial with a call to action. Um, and we're using text and shapes and a couple of images as well. So this is my um, final composition. Here's my main composition and you'll see that I have four nested um, compositions within it. I have one for KYW, well, all the social media, and then our call to action at the end. So I'll just scrub through here. UIW will last about four seconds, and then my next comp wipes in from the right to the left. And that goes about another four seconds, and then my third comp wipes in from the center. goes another four seconds and then the last three seconds I have um, my call to action. So that's what we want to do. Um, we want to use um, animation on our text that is consistent. So you'll see that the top, the KUIW all has the same animation. Um, the three phrases underneath it all kind of grow or scale up. And so we have some consistency along our, our commercial. And then at the end, I'm introducing a little bit, um, some different animations here, some linear wipes. So, okay. So all of them are about four seconds and then they wipe on to the next one. I made them five seconds long just to have a little bit of overlap here. Um, and um, it'll let you just kind of play with the actual timing of it. So we'll make the compositions five seconds long, but our main composition will be 15 seconds. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to save this and close. We'll start a new project. We'll call this CTA, I'll call it version two. And we're going to start by creating some compositions. So let's create our main composition. We'll call it main comp. Um, should be 1920 by 1080. Square pixels, 29.97. For the duration, we're going to make it 15 seconds. OK. And let's just go in and create all of our other compositions. This one will be. KUIW, five seconds. KUIW TV, five seconds. Logos, five seconds. Oops. And then our call to action, I can leave it at five seconds. Okay. So I'm going to close them all down over here in our project panel um, timeline. So I'm going to just leave our first one, KUIW. I'm going to close everything else down. OK, so let's just start by coming into the view and selecting Show Rulers then making sure that the show guides and snap to guides are on. The snap to guides makes it easy when you're adjusting the layer to a guide um, and when you're moving it, it'll snap to the guide um, automatically. So it'll line it up for you. We're also gonna turn on our title and action safe area and you're good. Okay, so we're going to add a new solid layer. We're gonna make this white. And for the width, we're going to change that to 2,500. And make sure that you have a magnification ratio where you can see your entire composition frame and then the borders that extend outside of it. So I'm just going to move it to the right so that I can see the edge here. And we're going to add a mask to the layer. So make sure that you're solid layer is selected. Come up to the pen tool and just put your first point outside of the frame and 
the next one will be outside of the frame. We're just working with the outer part of the frame here. And then we can come in here and kind of tweak it a little bit better. So I want a nice little angle here, a diagonal angle, but I don't want to see the edge of that frame. So maybe something like that. That looks good. And we're going to animate this um, so that it comes in from the right side of the frame moving into the left side of the frame. So let's make sure that our playhead is at the very beginning. 0, 0, 0. We're going to animate the position keyframe. The, sh the keyboard shortcut for position keyframe is the letter P. So if I press that, the position keyframe um, will, will show up. So I'm going to move this to the right so that it's off the frame. And that'll be our first keyframe. So I'm going to hit the position keyframe um, icon, the little stopwatch. I'm going to move my playhead 12 frames in. And then I'm going to bring it back. Maybe something like that. Cool. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to create a new solid here. So I'm going to click, make sure that your layer is deselected. So click off of it. Come back up to Layer, New, Solid. Now we're going to choose the color red. And I'm working with a specific red color. So the number is 980000. Hit OK. OK. And here I'm going to um, kind of mirror that diagonal line on here. So first of all, I'm just going to move, using my selection tool, I'm going to move it to the right so I can see my white solid layer. And while that red layer is selected, I'm going to come up here and use my pin tool and just do the same thing that I did for um, the white layer. Maybe start right, right here, down, and then we close the path. You'll, you'll know that the path is being closed because you'll see to the bottom right of the pin icon, there's a little circle that appears. And that means you're getting ready to close the path. Okay, so that is our mask. And then um, while the pin tool is still selected, you can adjust it. Just we want it to kind of mirror that. And that looks pretty good right there. All right, so for this one, um, I want it to come in the same way as a white, but kind of stop maybe somewhere over here, because my image will go here and my text will go here. All right, so let's look at our animation. So we have the white, I'm gonna move this out. We have the white coming in, stopping. I think. So maybe when the white is about halfway done on the frame, we start bringing in our red. So I'm going to move that red back to about right there. So that's where I want the animation to start. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to hit the letter P for position, and I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to move it out of the frame. I always try to use my X and Y axis. It's, it's a much cleaner animation. So there is my first keyframe. And then I'm going to come in. And I want it to stop. I think about right there. So that's halfway on the screen, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so if we kind of just eyeball it here, um, 
these the space between both of these keyframes looks about the same. So I'm starting at eight on my timeline for the red and I'm ending at 19. So about 11, could go one more. So make it 12 keyframes in between. And maybe I want this red to start a little earlier. So I'm just gonna move my layer to the left. So it's a matter of playing with the timing once you bring them in. I think that looks good. So what I'm doing is I'm actually starting the animation on the red solid at five on my on my timeline. That looks good. Okay, so now we want to add the little black edge here, just a little bit more, um, gives it a little bit more visual interest. So we're going to click off of these layers. We're going to select the pen tool and come up here and just draw a really thin rectangle at the edge. Um, mine automatically came in as black, but if it's not black, yours probably came in as red or something. Click up here on the fill swatch and make sure that it's a black rectangle shape. There's no stroke to turn off stroke. Click on the word stroke and make sure that it's turned off here. And with the pin tool still selected, I can come in here and make this a little thinner. Just want to refine the edge of that. Okay, so that looks that looks good to me. Um, then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to animate this black um, shape layer so that it wipes on the screen. So I want this black layer to start maybe at the top or at the bottom and it just wipes on really quickly. So I'm going to trim my layer. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and hit the open bracket. So now I'm going to apply one of my favorite effects. It's called a linear wipe. It's one of my go-to effects. Um, I'm not going to use the one that's in animation presets. I'm using the one under transitions. And I'm just going to drag it down to my shape layer. So the linear wipe, um, it's a quick and easy way to apply um, a reveal sort of like what we were doing with the Adidas logo when we were using a track mat to reveal those lines. We can do that with a, with a linear wipe as well. So kind of the same concept. All right, so we have our linear wipe effect applied. And to start with, I come up here to the transition complete and I just kind of move this to about 50% so I can see what kind of effect we're working with. This is what we're going to be animating. We're going to animate the transition complete property. So as I look at it, I see that there's a diagonal line here, and this is called the wipe angle. So I can move the wipe angle to be a little bit more linear, maybe something like that. So I have like a, about a 173 degree angle on that wipe. So you can play with this and um, make it wipe on at, at a certain angle. For me, I kind of like the, almost like a straight edge, something like that. Okay, so once you have the wipe angle done, um, we're going to animate transition complete. So we'll start with it off. So I just go, it's either gonna be zero or a hundred depending on the wipe angle. So I'm going to animate starting at 100% complete. I know it's a little tricky, um, but I'm going to add a keyframe for transition complete here. So I'll start at 100%. I'm going to move, I'm at 17, so I'm going to go over 10 frames, so go to 27 and then I'm going to change this to zero. So if I'll scrub through it here. Yeah, that's kind of the effect we're looking for. Okay, 
So that is done. I'm going to twirl those close. We're pretty much done here. Now it's a matter of adding our text and our image. So I want that wipe to finish. I want my text to start about right here. I'm going to click on my text tool and click on my composition. I'm going to type in KUIW. When I type it in, I usually just deselect the layer by clicking off of it, then come back and reselect it. So now everything in that layer is selected. Um, I'm going to change my font to a bigger, thicker font. For me, a veneer is good. I'm going to make this a black style so that it's really kind of thick. And then I'm going to change the font size to about 188. That's what I had written down. And let's see, yeah. The other thing that I like to do is I scaled it up vertically. So I went to 120% vertically. And I left the horizontal scale alone. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm using all caps for this. So I'm just selected all caps here. And once that's done, I'm going to use my selection tool and position it inside our title safe area. So this is a throwaway area, action safe area here, and then title safe. So maybe about right there. Okay, let's apply our effect to it. So I'm coming over to effects and presets, and I'm going to select, well, let's look. We're going to look in our animation preset folder in text. I'm going to animate this in. And I'm using fade up characters. So first of all, before I apply it, I'm going to trim my layer here. Option, open bracket. That way I know where I'm starting. And I'm going to take that fade up characters and drop it in to my layer. And if I hit the letter U on my keyboard, um, it'll reveal the keyframes. So just make sure that the layer is selected. Hit the letter U, and there are my keyframes. And like I said, anytime we add um, a preset animation, they're usually way too long. So you can see like um, I'm starting almost at one second and the animation lasts about two seconds. So really just want this to last maybe about 10 or 12 frames. So from 27, let's go to 110. And we're just gonna drag that keyframe over to our playhead. That looks good. You do a command S to save. All right, so we're on our way here. So let's add, after the animation is done, then I want my three lines of text to appear um, staggered. So I'm gonna click off of all of the layers. So deselect the layer, come up to your text tool again. Our first line of text is gonna be college radio. Type that in and then deselect the layer, reselect it, and now we can adjust the font size. Um, instead of 188, I'm making this 72. Instead of black, I'm using, actually I changed the whole font here. I'm using Arial on this. Arial regular, medium style, or regular style. Yeah, regular style, Arial, 72 font, still using the color white. And I kind of like the vertical scale, so I'm going to leave it at 120% vertical scale and 100% horizontal scale. 
and using my selection tool, I'll kind of place it right underneath KUIW, but I wanted a line to the right, like justified on the right side of it. So somewhere like that. Then I'm going to trim the layer so I can visually see on my timeline where everything starts. For this, I'm using um, an effect called scale up. So animation presets text because we're working with the text layer. And I believe this one is under the scale folder, scale up. So I'm gonna drop that to my college radio layer. Now from here, um, I should hit the letter U so that it'll reveal the keyframes, but it doesn't. So I'm gonna just select college radio layer, hit the letter U, and there are my keyframes. So I just want this to last about probably another 10 frames. So I'm at 110, I'll go to 120, and then move that keyframe over. And we'll play it back. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so the next two lines are going to say, oh, actually, one more thing. Um, I don't want this to be in all caps. So I'm going to select the layer, go back to my character panel, and deselect all caps. But I do want radio to be capitalized. So something like that. Now I've kind of messed up the alignment, so I'm going to use my selection tool and come back and align it on the right side. Okay, so now I think we're ready. All right, nothing is affected on the animation. So the next two lines of text are going to say open format and student DJs. So I'm going to just select my college radio layer and duplicate it. Command D duplicates it or edit duplicate will also do it. So I want two versions of it, College Radio 2 and College Radio 3. And they're hidden, can't really see it. Using your selection tool, you can just drop it down and select layer 3 and drop that one down. And here we're just going to type over it. So if you click, double click within the layer, you'll be able to access um, the text. So here, instead of college radio, I want to type in open format. And then I'll select my next layer, double click inside. And well, I'm just going to select all of that college radio. I'm going to type in student DJs. Come back up to my selection tool and make sure that they're all aligned here. Right, something like that. Then I want to make sure that the space in between them is pretty even. So I'm going to select College Radio, hold down my Shift key, and select Student DJ so that they're all three selected. Then coming up to the Align panel, I'm going to distribute the layers vertically. So that just made a tiny little adjustment to this um, layer, but that'll make sure that the spacing in between them is even. So I'll try that again so you can maybe see it a little bit better. If I were to move that one down, you can see that they're not really distributed evenly. So selecting all of them coming up to distribute layer, distribute vertically. And you can see that open format came down. So now if I play them, you can see they all kind of come up together. What we want to do is we want to stagger them. So we want college radio to come up, then I can move, let me deselect the layers. I can move open format to the right so just clicking on open format layer 
and moving it right after that first animation ends. And then I can reveal my keyframes on this layer by clicking the letter U. And then I can use that as a guide to move my student DJ layer so that it starts right at the last keyframe. So now they're staggered. Yeah. And then you can play with the timing of it. Um, if you want them even a little bit more staggered, you can do something like maybe two frames out. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we want to import our our image. In fact, let's import all of our images. So import file. We're using Darcy for UIWTV. So KYW logo. In one image that I don't think I sent you was um, a screenshot of the social media icons. I'm using that at the very end in the call to action. Um, I simply took a screenshot of the Communication Arts website and I got all of their social media icons. So we'll come back to that. I'll put this on Blackboard so you can um, download it. Okay, so I'm going to just collapse these layers and let's see. Yeah, let's just bring in our first image, KUIW. I'm just going to drop it down on my timeline. It's really big. I'm going to scale it down. So the shortcut key on the keyboard is the letter S. It'll reveal the scale property. Then I can come in here and scale this down. Oh, about 17. That looks good. 17%. Then I'm going to move this over to the left. Keeping in mind, like I want to center it, like maybe from here to here. So something like that. And it's okay if I go outside of my text safe area, because it's not text, it's an image. So that looks good. All right. And in my animation, I sort of have, um, this is my final animation, I sort of have this image wipe on at the beginning and it's wiping on using a track mat. So let's do that. So the track mat is going to reveal something that is already there. And I want the image to wipe on exactly like the white solid wipes on. So I'm going to use that white solid as my track um, as my track mat. So what I want to do is down here, this is my white solid. I'm going to make a copy of this. So command D to duplicate. Because I'm using it as my track mat, I want that layer to be right above the image. Because remember, um, the track mat will only work on the layer directly beneath it. So that has to be right above it. On my image layer, I'm going to make sure that I have my track mat visible here. If you don't see it, um, there's a little switch down here that switches between modes and track mats. I have them both um, showing on mine, but if you're if you can't see track mat, it's probably because there's something down here that says toggle between modes or track mats. So click on that and it'll toggle between them. In the track mat column, I'm simply going to select alpha mat white solid. And I'm just going to play it back here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The only thing we want to do is we want to reveal this corner here. So we need to, um, because we just made a copy of this, um, it copied the same keyframes. So on this white solid, let's um, select it, hit the letter U, and this is a keyframe we want to adjust. 
um, in order to get to that keyframe, um, click these little arrows here, help you navigate between keyframes on a layer. So if I hit this little, uh, the back arrow, it'll go to the previous keyframe. So clicking it, and it'll get me to that exact keyframe. So here's where I wanna animate. I want this um, solid to completely continue going to the left so that I can see this part of the image. So I'm just going to click on the position animator and keep moving it to the left. And there, it reveals the whole image. So let me play that back now. Yeah, looks good. Then the other thing we can do to that image is we can apply an effect called vignette. Again, just you know, giving it a little bit more of a punch. So here's my vignette, not the one in animation preset, but under stylize. Drag that to your image layer, KUIW JPEG. And then here we can add a little bit more vignette styling to it. And you can toggle this little FX icon here. So when you click on the FX, it'll turn it off. That was the before, click it on, and that's um, with the vignette effect. So a little bit more, um, it'll just really focus the, the point of interest on her. So yeah. So we're done here with um, our first composition. That looks really good. So I'm gonna go up here to my project tab, go to my main comp, double click it and we're going to just drag our first composition down into the timeline. So we have our first four or five seconds done here. 